Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum Pakistan. Uh, welcome back to Corporate Governance and we are moving forward. Uh, we were talking about the different stakeholders, uh, their perspectives, their anomalies, uh, their opportunities, uh, their uh, different uh, aspects and dimensions which influence corporate governance and how corporate governance tends to influence all of the stakeholders. We are moving a little bit ahead and a very Im important topic is corporate governance and the economy. Now, the economy is directly and indirectly related to corporate governance. What we see is, is that through better corporate governance, the economy tends to grow in a better way. It becomes more predictable, it becomes more sustainable, and it becomes more growth oriented. Another thing is, is that with the uh, stronger economy, the, uh, the organizations also tend to grow and it becomes uh, interrelated with each other. That the organizations are growing and the, org and the economy is growing with better, better corporate governance. Now, when we look at the economy of Pakistan, then Pakistan is listed as the next 11 emerging economies in the 21st century. We have immense potential. Uh, and uh, there are so many segments and so many areas which have not been looked at. And we have been basically more oriented towards our agri-economy, towards our textile economy. And we have not looked at the new avenues which tend to exist. One of them uh, is, is tourism. Uh, I mean, like a country like Malaysia, which has uh, a tourism uh, industry of nearly 30 billion. Pakistan can go even far beyond because we have so many historical sites. We have uh, so much of variation. Uh, we have uh, the Hindu Kush, we have the Himalayas, we have the uh, Karakoram, uh, we have a huge coastal line, we have four provinces, we have all four weathers, uh, we have a very uh, good infrastructure, one of the best uh, motorway infra infrastructures in the world, one of the most uh, comprehensive telecom systems in the world. And besides that, uh, we have a huge population and a very educated population, which is uh, English speaking. So just an example is, is that we can look at the tourism industry. But again, there's a great, in, uh, there's a great need to institutionalize these new industries uh, to ensure uh, that proper practices are over there, that SOPs are followed, that operational manuals are over there, that financial manuals are over there, and that financial practices are done in the right way. That would ensure and ensue more confidence in the investors and also in the people who want to be involved in that particular industry. And another thing that we can see is that the industrial sector of Pakistan basically contributes to 20% of the GDP. Manufacturing is the most vibrant subsector of the industrial sector, having a contribution of 64.8%, and in GDP, it accounts for 13.6%. So again, uh, we also have a vibrant industry, but it can go far more beyond because there is so much potential and there are so much uh, uh, opportunities which have not uh, been looked at properly, and uh, there is so much of uh, unbridled uh, manpower which can be streamlined into all of this and the whole economy can improve through a better governance mechanism. Now when we look at uh, SMEs, so then uh, small and medium enterprises contribute to 90% of all our enterprises in Pakistan and employ almost 80% of the total non-agricultural labor. Uh, the, the IT industry has a huge potential in Pakistan. Uh, the number of IT companies has increased to over 1300 and the estimated size of the IT industry is now 2.8 billion, but, but the potential is more than 50 billion. So again, uh, we are underutilizing these sectors, and these sectors can only improve if the corporate governance structure improves so that all the stakeholders have more confidence and can contribute and invest in a better way and also take those services. Now, companies like the IT, uh, IT sector can go around the world. They can, they can serve any company in the world. They can serve the largest companies in the world, but those companies must have the surety that there are proper institutional frameworks within those organizations and within that sector, which can also protect their rights and their needs and their requirements. And that would create uh, a, a, a colossal effect, uh, which would have a very positive effect on the industry as a whole. And that, again, is the role of the corporate sector. Pakistani textiles contribute for 70%. But again, we've lost a lot of the market. A lot of its value-added market has gone to uh, Bangladesh. And there's a great need that we produce the best cotton in the world and therefore we should be actually uh, having value added products creating our own brands which can sell at premium prices which would further uh, again ensure that we have uh, a better foreign exchange uh, inflow which would lead uh, to a better economy as a whole so all of these things are very very important we have textiles which has to be value added and upscaled uh, to new horizons and also uh, brand management we have the IT sector, which can go up to $50 billion plus uh, because of the fact that we have an English-speaking population and a university population, which can greatly contribute to that and can spread across uh, the whole world, getting orders uh, for Pakistan. And we can also house 
uh, different multinational companies. Then we have the tourism sector, which has a huge potential, and uh, we can uh, source into it through institutionalization and through frameworks and ensuring that there is corporate governance in that, whereby uh, hundreds and thousands of people can come to Pakistan and explore Pakistan and the beauty of Pakistan and the historical context and the religious context of Pakistan. And then we also have our own, uh, uh, own classical conventional industry, which needs to be further improved and enhanced and also uh, replicated. And uh, there has to be modernization of all of that, whereby efficiency and effectiveness uh, can be augmented uh, and uh, the exports and also the local industry uh, can work uh, hand in hand in tandem uh, together. And what we have to do is that we have to do away with our reliance on imports and focus more on exports and self-sustainability and self-reliance, which would uh, strengthen our economy in a far better way. Now, all of this can be achieved through corporate governance. And that is the importance of corporate governance, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Take care.